Okay, so I'm going to tune up the lugs here. I need to tension the plate so I can mount the drivers on it permanently. I have right here a snap-on torque wrench. This is a really fancy one. I, in the past, used a analog torque wrench to do this, but uh, for this job, I needed to have a really small torque wrench because of the limited clearance on the bottom lugs. I'm borrowing this from my father. It's very accurate, too. Now, in order to tension the plate, I want to maintain a, a squareness with its relationship on all the corners, so I'm just going to go around and gradually tune it up. My end goal is 50 inch-pounds. I'm going to start by bringing each lug up to uh, 15 inch-pounds. I'm going to go along, sort of like how you would tune a drum. It's very similar, so I'll start on this corner and then I'll hit the bottom corner on the opposite side. And you know, I'll go across just like that. Now the cool thing about this uh, particular torque wrench is it beeps at you when you get to whatever you have it set to. So I don't have to physically see where the needle's at and that's going to be very helpful when I do the bottom lugs. Cool, that one's done. Move on to the next. I am finally ready to mount my driver permanently onto this plate. But in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to clean off an area uh, where the contact point is. Because if you remember from previous videos, I had coated this plate in WD-40, and epoxy is not gonna stick very well. Epoxy is what I plan to use to mount the driver's contact point with the plate. I'm going to use this Gorilla Weld. I've tried JD Weld in the past and that didn't really work so well. It worked, but it's kind of brittle and can break off. So I'm thinking this Gorilla Weld might work better because it says Steel Bond Epoxy. <laughs> Hopefully it works. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean off the WD-40 at that one little spot back here. Then I will apply some epoxy. Get this all screwed down, walk away for 24 hours, come back tomorrow, and that's when we're gonna bring this guy downstairs into the basement. Do you know this stuff causes cancer in the state of California? But only there. Oh. <coughs> that is some very stinky epoxy. You know, if the smell of the epoxy determines how good it is, this is probably the best stuff ever. Oh. It is very, very stinky. Whew. <laughs> oh man. It says mix it for 20 seconds. I don't know if I can handle that. Oh man. <coughs> yeah, this is far stinkier than anything I've ever used before. <laughs> I don't really want to go any further. Oh. So then it says clamp it, which is basically what I'm going to do by screwing the thing down. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. It's perfect. Whew. Wow, that is so stinky. I got to get this in the garbage somewhere far away. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to put some extra nuts on here to lock it down. I don't want this thing ever coming loose. That would be a bad thing. Right, so same step down here in a sense. You know, I'm going to clean the metal with the rubbing alcohol before I permanently attach this pickup, which is actually a driver. But in this purpose, it's going to be a pickup. Now before 
I go any further, I'm going to just show you that this is different. I'm not using epoxy. It has a sticker with a little tab that you pull off. So I'm going to just figure out where this is going to line up and then apply some solvent. Right about there. Okay. Side, so I'll be done as soon as this gets mounted. Awesome. That's not getting any better than that. So I'm actually done now. I'm going to put this cover back on here and this guy's ready to go back, back downstairs in the basement, wire it up, and then testing. That's exciting. We're almost there. I think we're just holding it back so it doesn't kill us. All right. So I'm going to try to get out of here as quickly as I can. I'm almost done. What I have here is a jack panel. These XLR cables are in need of a jack to plug into this. So what I'm going to use is a 5-pin XLR, which I just have to solder onto here. So both of these cables will go to one jack, and that will get plugged into here. Now, while I'm down here, I'll just point out that the connection to the amplifier is now a little bit different. This is the power supply connection. I ended up using this bulky cable with an 8 pin octal socket. Uh, that connects to this, which is the new power supply for the amplifier. Now, it's basically the same setup as before, same transformer. I just decided that I needed to mount it externally because when I had it inside of the case, I could hear the transformer humming a little bit, and I don't want the reverb to pick that up. It's a sensitive reverb, you know, it'll pick up anything. So I decided the best thing to do was to move that transformer externally, which is what I have done. And now I can't even hear it humming externally, but whatever, it's working fine. So here we go. I'm gonna get this soldered up and then get the hell out of here. I'm pretty sure the plate reverb's done now. I have everything wired up, all the work is done. So that just leaves one more thing, testing. In the next video, we're going to test the plate reverb and compare it to what it originally sounded like. If you've been watching the series so far, thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe. So, stay tuned. One more episode, guys. Bye-bye.